thanks for tuning in. I'm so excited to share some blindfold yoga with you. Um, I was obsessing about the layout and if you could see me standing and seated and then I realized you won't be watching, you'll be listening. So before we begin, if you could please go see Lynn and sign in, that would be great. No charge for today's class. <laughs> I miss you, Lynn, this one's for you. And then come to your side in a comfortable space. You've got your blindfolds or a scarf ready to go. And before you begin, if at home you have any type of aromatherapy, I love using that because today's practice is all about coming to your senses. And we could use some time to get out of our monkey mind and into our feeling body. So two of the things that I use when I teach a blindfold class are walk in the woods is a very grounding scent, smell. It's just like walking through the woods, earthy, grounding, helps you feel steady, you need some roots before you move and stand up when your eyes are closed. Both of my oils are made by my special favorite oily yogi, Nicole Cordelli, who has a studio over in Marmora, or actually Upper Township, so I can put links on for that. But she's made us our New Jersey Beach Yoga Blend, which was hard to create, something that would smell like the ocean, but it's a little bit relaxing, a little bit uplifting, a blend of everything, and that's kind of my flow, high tide, low tide. But when we come into blindfolded yoga, we start with low tide, then we go to high tide, and we come on back to low tide. So let's begin, set up a space. If you notice, I don't have any burning candles. That would be a terrible idea with my eyes closed because I am going to attempt to teach this class with my blindfold on. Normally when I have a Wednesday night class, everybody puts on their blindfold, but I'm watching everyone, I'm kind of weaving through the room. But for today I thought, I'm gonna be right there with you. Uh, this is my makeshift yoga studio here, just a mile away from where we normally practice in Sea Isle. I've got my blindfold ready, I've got the bells. One part I will be taking off my blindfold for is when we go into the guided meditation because I've got that in my sheet protector. Good thing I practice yoga and I'll be guiding you through a deep, relaxing Shavasana. Uh, you might want to even scroll to that sometime without doing a whole blindfolded class to just come into this to listen to it. And I might even put out something like an audible guided Shavasana body scan for you because it is a good time to have somebody give you a little lullaby. But let's begin by picking out a shell out of our bucket. Ooh, what did we get today? Comparison is the thief of joy. It's true. When you compare yourself to each other, we're always meant to be different. There's always going to be somebody in front of you, somebody behind you. And in today's trying times, whatever situation you're going through, that's your thing. It's okay to feel bad. Even if somebody else is suffering a much worse crisis, there's going to be somebody that doesn't have your crisis. Allow yourself time to be okay with marinating in whatever feelings you have, your feelings are your feelings, there's nothing wrong with it. Marinate, think about it, moan, and then move on. So the beautiful part about comparison is the thief of joy, when you bring it into a blindfolded class, is that nobody is looking at each other. And one of the benefits is that we surrender the ego and you feel your way through with so much freedom. You're not trying to copy the teacher, you're not looking around to see what everybody else looks like, and if your body isn't in perfect alignment, that's great because there really is no such thing. As long as you're moving, breathing, and feeling, and you're not experiencing sharp pain, it's okay. Your knee's all right, and it might even be okay for your knee to go over your ankle. Oh! But the knees are still made of glass. If you've taken my class, you know that. So let's put on our blindfolds. Adjust them so they feel good and come to a comfortable seated position. Feel the roots below you. And as you close your eyelids, let your eyes relax, turning the palms up to receive some information for your body, from your body. As you take a deep breath in, notice the temperature of the breath. Is it cold or is it hot? And as you exhale through the nose, notice the temperature on the exit. Start to scooch around, make any natural movements that help you feel more comfortable. And we'll be returning to our seats. 
but we'll begin being really grounded. So as you feel for your mat with your hands all around you, just spin your body around so that you can allow your feet, and I'd recommend taking off your socks. I was actually only wearing these because they say you are amazing. They were a beautiful gift from a beautiful yogi. Toss them over to the side and scoot your feet out to what would be the end of your mat. Then allow the body to lay down, roll it back in. So we'll start in lying down mountain pose, also known as Shavasana, we'll be back here. Then feel for the outsides of your mat, the long lines of the mat. We have the short lines of the mat and the long lines of the mat. And already you might be noticing more sensations of touch than you normally feel. Then reach behind you, feel the other corners of your mat. And let's reach all the way up overhead, point the toes, point the fingers. Take a deep breath in and exhale through the mouth. <sighs> this time is just for me. Inhale the moment, the feeling of this space is just yours. Exhale, <sighs> anybody else's stuff. And one more time, lengthen out like you're on the rack. Stretch, 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 inhale. And as you exhale, a nice ah, as you slide the hands down, one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. And we'll tap into the waves of breath with eyes closed, envisioning the ocean. On your inhale, we'll feel the wave begin right below the navel. So filling up the bottom of your lungs with a deep inhale. And then allow the breath to just pass through your nose. It feels different when we exhale through the nose versus through the mouth. We'll take a couple moments to just notice the breath. Listening to the sounds of the breath. What does it sound like coming in? What does it sound like coming out? And as you feel this rise and fall, the body is just being, not doing. It's only the breath that's moving the body. And if we're breathing, we'll be sure more right with us than wrong with us. And we're all breathing on our own. So deep wave of gratitude for that right now and every moment. Once you start to feel the rippling deep in the bottom, that's the deep breath. We're practicing Dirga Pranayama, our basic three-part yogic breath. And I'll keep it simple today. After you establish, where's the bottom of this container for prana or life force? Let's expand it. Breathing into the bottom and let it spill out to the side ribs. So we're breathing into the belly, feeling it expand, and then stretching our capacity like blowing up a balloon so you feel the side ribs start to open up. Imagining your rib cage is like an accordion, and they stretch it wide open on the inhale. On the exhale, the accordion takes a smaller shape as the ribs come together and squeeze empty. So we're breathing up, hands up, sideways, and we'll even feel the feedback from the back of your mat as you breathe in and out. So let's grow the wave up to the top. This is the last place we want to feel the inhale, and one of the reasons for that is if you think about it, when you're anxious, there's this <laughs> like a crying baby or a crying adult or a panting dog. And if we only breathe in the upper chest, we don't get to the bottom. And that's really where the exchange of nutrients happens in the lungs. So in order to take a refreshing new breath in and out, we begin, think about it in thirds, a third to the belly, inhale, a third to the side ribs. And it's like you're pouring up a glass of your favorite beverage, take it right up to the top till you can't breathe anymore. And just for a moment, notice what that feels like, this abundant, new, fresh energy coming into your body. Let it swirl around like a vacuum. And as you exhale, let go of any competition, any judgment, any comparison. As you feel the belly start to descend, the ribs come together. And we'll take some effort to squeeze fully empty. In order to do that, we need to draw the belly button down towards the spine, towards the mat, like you're in the base of a crunch. So squeeze, empty, 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 go ahead, exhale, exhale, exhale. There's a sense of strength that comes when we willfully exhale. So let's ride it like we're surfing the waves. Inhale, belly, side ribs. 
right above the heart, like you're frosting your heart with new energy. Exhale, squeeze from the bottom, the center, and the top. So try three on your own, just listening to the sounds of your breath. In through the nose, nice and slow. Full capacity. And when you reach the full capacity, just notice the sensations of what it's like to fully breathe in. When you begin to squeeze empty, feel the sensations change using your core musculature to help you squeeze empty. And what it's like to feel fully engaged as you let go because it takes some power, engagement and intention to let go. I promise to be quiet the next few breaths, all you. Change the placement of our hands so you take your pinkies to the very top hip bones in the front of your body and allow your thumbs to palpate until you feel the very bottom of your rib cage. So there's a space now. On the inhale, this space between your pinky and your thumb will grow. So as you inflate, I promise your belly won't stay out there. Try to grow the biggest Buddha belly you ever could imagine. And as you exhale, through the nose, start to pour energy out, cleansing, rinsing away anything you did this week that you don't want to take forward into the rest of your week. And we'll feel expansive, uncluttered, open, hopeful. Inhale, stretch that big space as you exhale. Your hip bones. And your rib cage get closer as the space between your thumb and pinky get wider. That's back to the accordion. So let's breathe 360 degrees around the center of our, of our bodies and light it up the whole entire time we flow together. And now that you've experienced where this apparatus is for breathing, let's just put both hands on the heart and take a moment here to feel your heartbeat. You'll never get the same beat twice. The breath will never be exactly the same twice. And as you visualize the ocean waves, it's never the same exact wave twice. So practicing letting go of attachment and being in whatever wave you have, allowing it to rise up and allowing it to release. Going with the flow Breathing, feeling, smiling. And as you tap into this heartbeat, as you symbolically cover your heart, allow some of the love you freely give out to others to bounce right back for yourself. We're going banking today. We're making a big deposit of love for ourselves, filling up our bank. Make another deposit. And let the Deposits be good investments. So some positive affirmations here. We'll start with the first one. I am breathing. I can feel. I can hear. I can move. And then open up your heart and receive a positive affirmation. We'll start right off the bat with three I am amazings. You're still here watching, so I really do think you're amazing. Let's go. Ready? I am amazing, I am amazing, I am amazing. <sighs> now visualize sending that amazing to three people and point to them. You are amazing, you are amazing, you are amazing. And imagine them smiling at you. Awesome. So let's begin to lay our hands down and just notice your contact points. We're going to play with contact points. Where are the roots? Where are we grounded? We've got the ankles. Can pound the legs a little bit, feel the backs of your calves. There's a little natural curve underneath your knee. 
And then go right to shaking your booty side to side. And remember, when we practice, we play. Namaste, nama play. Not so serious. Feeling both sitting bones. And then feeling a little roll to the side. The back muscles, the muscles, <laughs> body muscles. And the shoulder blades, right shoulder blade and left. The back of your hands and then the front of your hands. So let's just roll back of the hands, palm to the sky, palm to the earth. Hands, elbows, shoulders. Let's take the head to the right and to the left, shake it out, feel the back. And already we're starting to loosen up, relax the facial muscles, relax the space between your brain and your skull. Let all the water around your brain run freely through the new grooves you'll create by removing sight. Just like the water comes in from the ocean and drips into the grooves after a few footprints. So here's our contact points. Let's change it up, bend the knees, and walk your feet, heels to hips. Allowing the big toes to touch, we'll begin knees together, toes together. And feel what it's like to have your feet on the earth, lifting your heels, lifting the toes. We're not weight bearing our body yet, but we're just starting to feel the texture of the mat. Take a deep breath in and send it to your feet. And let's windshield wiper the feet side to the knees side to side. You'll roll off to the outer blades of your feet. And notice the sensation here in that space we played with from the bottom rib cage to the hip bones. It's opening up. So those obliques are great, not just for ab workouts, but they're actually accessory muscles for breathing. So we might even improve the quality of our breath just by having our eyes closed and feeling this space open up. After we've done a few of these, this is apana, the lower energy of the body. It feels good. You could do it in your bed. I've always called it bed yoga. Walk the feet about a hips width distance apart. Align the shoulders. Decide where it feels good so that you have some space between your earlobes and your shoulders. And begin to windshield wiper the other side. So knees to the right. Knees to the left. There is no wrong way to do this. Wiggle it out. Feel free to add a little scooch asana. Same similar movement as far as knees going side to side and feet rolling, but a few different helper muscles. So how about nobody sits the bench today? We move every little baby muscle we might not be aware of, but an increased concentration of what's happening on the inside making conscious choices to move and noticing what they say to us. And taking the feet real wide, dropping it down, that feels even different. Beginning to feel the shoulder blades join the body party here, side to side. After we've loosened up, I hope your glutes woke up a little bit this morning. Get all that sit out of there that we've been storing with time seated and stressed. Very gently, let's reach the arms up to the sky. Pick the feet up off the earth, reach the feet to the sky, and just shake the hands and feet. Just shake it, shake it, shake it. If I was allowed to have music on YouTube, I'd probably be playing good vibrations here. Let's make up good vibrations. Hands up to the sky, feet up to the sky. Let's start to circle the wrists, circle the ankles. Oh, that was a good crack. Motion is lotion, so let's rotate the other way. You're moisturizing all your joints in here. Doesn't that feel good? Now let's wiggle the toes and fingers. Spreading the toes, spreading the fingers, making even more space, so space between the fingers, space between the toes matter. And if you don't think these little parts of the body matter as much as your quads, get a paper cutter or a stub toe. So after we wiggle, crunch and move, palms only, resist the urge to change the shape of your knuckles. So we won't bend the knuckle, knuckles or grip. We'll softly place just the palms on the kneecaps. Why? Because the knees are made of glass. And as you softly hold on here, drop the fingertips and thumb tip onto the side of your knee, resisting the urge to clench. 
Then allow the knees to bend a little closer to your body and start to make almost an egg beater shape where you take your knees out wide, your palms are on them, take them down, take them away from you, then draw them up close to your body. So out to the side, down, in, up a couple times. Pulverizing any tension in the hip sockets with that big femur head like you're making guacamole with a mortar and pestle. And let's head the other way. Pull the knees down, knees together. Take the knees wide. Pull them up to the side. Now they're starting to meet right over your chest. So straight down, out, up, and in. Reversing the direction. Relaxing, no tension. Oh, look at that, I punched my knuckles. See, it's just information. I'm judging, I'm not a bad yogi. I just got some reminders. Ooh, lighten up, baby. So as we hug the knees in, let's give ourselves a big hug, lift the chin, forehead to the knees. And take a couple big breaths here in the hug to feel the weight in the spine shifts now. Where do you feel weighted and grounded? We've just got a little contact point here in the mid-low back. Inhale, and on an exhale, drop the feet down. Start to turn the body to one side, left or right. Hug into the fetal position. Because really, if this is your first time of blindfolded yoga, you're just a little blindfolded baby, starting to grow and learn something new. So as you hug in, we'll do three audible sounds now, because when you hold on to sound and let it go, it really harmonizes the nervous system. So a big, gigantic inhale, biggest one so far. Open your mouth real wide. <sighs> yeah, that feels good. This time we'll make an O sound. O. Oh, and hold it to the end. Next, let's bring the lips together, but not pursed, real strong. Just a soft little touch of the lips. Inhaling through the nose. Feel the vibration as you exhale through the nose and make it mm sound like a B. Mm. The three seed sounds of Om. So let's find our hand on the floor. Push ourselves up and come to all fours. So we'll feel first. We're back in that baby move. We're toddlers now, we're crawling. Is that a toddler? I don't know, my kids are older. Let's just walk up and down the mat. And when you feel where your mat meets the floor, just notice it, trace it, and begin to crawl backwards on your mat. See where your feet come up and get a sense of space. Where are you? And these aren't strict boundaries. They're just the spot where your yoga mat touches the floor. When you feel like you're somewhere in the middle, let the hips sink towards the heels, child's pose, and reach the arms all the way forward, dropping your forehead down to the earth. Symbolically bowing to your healthy body just as it is, and feeling something new stretch as you feel the top skins of your feet touch the mat. If you're a lady out there and you need a pedicure, which you probably do because nail salons are closed, imagine you're going to mess it up by pressing, pressing, pressing all your toenails into the floor, stretching through the top skins of your feet where you tie your shoes. That's a great stretch for the shin. If at any point, I meant to say this earlier, if at any point none of this serves you and you want to do anything else, you do you the best. Take a break, take a pause. If you're peeking, you can do that too. So as you lean back, this is a fluid flow that suits your body. So let's stretch it out, reach the fingertips towards the top of your mat, and imagine your tug of war. You're reaching and walking your fingertips forward to the top of your mat, pulling your tailbone far away to open up space now in the side body. So now when we do the accordion breath, you'll be able to feel it a little more. So we'll let the breath move the body. Inhale, even your armpits are stretching. And here's in a little immune booster, any motion in the body that stimulates organs, 
starts to get a little flow happening. So let's imagine our lymph nodes under our armpits rinsing out with each inhale and exhale as we stretch the tissue right in your armpits. Pulling the tailbone back even more. Inhale, and as we exhale, let's walk the right hand to the center of your mat. Keeping your left palm on the floor, we'll draw a line as you bend your elbow, drawing the left hand down first to meet the side of your knee, wiggle around. Both hands are grounded, these are deep contact points, palming the earth. Allowing a new breath to come in on the exhale, let's slide the left hand all the way down to the feet. Walking both hands away from each other as we make a C shape, we can walk the right hand a little bit more towards the left and the left fingers a little bit closer to the back toes. This creates a big opening from the right hip bone to the right armpit. You can look over your left shoulder if that feels good for your neck or any place else that feels good for you. We are going to be so good at Twister after this. So many verbal instructions. After you've felt that, let's stay grounded. Slide the left palm up to meet your knee. Turn the fingers forward. Pause here. Walk the right hand over to the right side of your mat, still stretched out. On the exhale, we're taking the left hand all the way forward, but this time wider, opening up the knees a little and doing a rock and roll side to side. Now, if any of you got a foot cramp doing that, curl your toes under, that can happen. Please hydrate and get more electrolytes. That'll help you out. Foot massage. But I'll try and stay focused on the blindfolded yoga class. So let's reorient, shake out the neck, draw the left hand to the center of your mat. Spread the fingers wide. Big handprint here. We're using the exhale to drive the right hand down to the side of your right knee as you adjust your neck and wiggle a little here. Take your time. Exhale, busy. Let's slide the right hand, keeping contact with the earth, all the way down towards your right feet. You may change the orientation of your palm. And as we willfully stretch, the left fingers to the top of the mat, the right fingers to the back of the mat. Feel your armpit tissue open up here. Shake your head out. Begin to drag your left hip bone towards your heel more. And send the big wave of opening up the side of the left body now. Tap the floor, inhale. We're using the breath out to slide the right palm up to the knee, wiggle. The left over towards the left. Then the right comes up and find the sides of your mat and let's take our hands off the mat. Woo baby, off road. Imagine this is sand off your mat and just kind of dig through the sand, relax. So we have the, the thumbs touching the outer edges of the mat. We're inhaling to come up and making a couple of hip circles here. If you need to pad your knees, take your blindfold off, go get a towel. I should have said that in the beginning. Hey, it's my first one. Whatever you need, pad the knees. Roll it the other way. And you can really liberate your hips a lot more when you don't think people are staring at you. Put a little swooshy tushy. So let's slide forward and slide back which means hips to heels, hands are still off road. Inhale, drag your head as close to the top of the mat as you can. We're shifting the body, the spine stays long, hips to heels, forward. There's a lot of room here with the hands wide for the shoulders to pass through. Awesome. Let's do hips to heels, we're back in a wide arm child's pose. Walk the hands in. Now pinkies are on the outer borders of your mat. The fingers are really wide, spread apart. You wanna know a funny joke I say? I think I'm funny, I hope you think it's funny. 
middle finger towards the teacher because usually you're facing me. But that's only during times like arm circles. Okay, tangentary, off track. Get back on your mat. Stretch it out. Awesome. Let's do a little shifting forward. The heart pulls, pulls us forward. The top of your body is sliding towards the top of your mat. On an exhale, we're pulling the tailbone back to the heels. We have long stretched out arms. Inhale, come forward. Just a micro bend in the elbow. Exhale, come back. Starting to warm it up. Grounded before we begin to rise. Sliding forward and back. A nice little glide. Let's walk the hands just a tiny bit closer. Rise up and feel our way to what would be all fours. Knees underneath the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. If it's helpful to you, you can take your right hand, feel for your left shoulder, elbow, and wrist, and imagine those joints are stacked. You'll be able to tell if you're way far away. So just sense, again, process, not perfection. Then what you can do is take your hand down and slide it over to the right. And see how that feels. And if you want to, it just feels plain old good to take your hand, shoulder, elbow, wrist, give yourself a massage. We look like a table where our fingers are spread, our knees are underneath our hips, our hands are underneath our shoulders. And we'll roll out the neck. One way or the other. Relaxing the jaw. And from this whole force point, tuck and roll the pelvis, which means it feels like you're doing a crunch. Your pubic bone goes closer to your belly button. On the exhale. On the inhale, we're just letting the pelvis roll back, stick the booty up. So rock and roll just through the pelvis first before we add a full cat cow to loosen up here. It should feel like a pretty nice stretch for your low back and then a stretch for the front of your abdominal muscles. There's a place in between that's neutral and we'll just feel it. It's not totally tucked. It would be like you were standing in good posture. So we'll find a neutral back and then we'll just do a little upper body, chin up, shoulder squeeze, chin down, press the earth away. Starting to go back and forth with the shoulders. And finding neutral here. We'll tuck the chin. Imagine you have an orange between your chin and your chest. So we're not looking forward. There's nothing to see because we have blindfolds on. So the, our neck is in a neutral position. If I looked at you from the side, it would be your earlobe, your shoulder, and your hip bone in one long line. So let's feel that line, put a little micro bend in the elbow, and just do three cat cows. Before we begin, this is another place where it's your option. Flat feet, top skins of the feet down, wrinkly arches, or toes curled under, stretching the toes, which might feel better for you. Or a little bit of both. As we begin cat-cow, we'll think about it as a string of pearls, your spine. Instead of bend, bend one way, bend the other, let's articulate really mindfully. So we're Hanging out here in all fours, blindfolds on, tucking the tailbone under, beginning to curl, just the low back as we exhale. Once we feel like we can't tuck it under anymore, start to pick up your mid back. Spread the shoulders apart and draw the nose towards the belly. As we come into cat pose, push the earth away and feel all the space between each bone in your spine your inhale is like you pulled over to put air in your tires. Fill them up. Inflate the tires. Nice cushions. The way we lead cat pose is from the top. Beginning to drop the chin, drop the heart. The shoulders get a little closer. The belly starts to drop towards the floor. The hips roll up and we look up. So it's called cat cow. Rolling back like a roller coaster. We're exhaling, bottom to top, arching. We're up in cat pose. Then we're dropping top to bottom, coming back, cow pose. One more time. This is fun, isn't it? Nobody's allergic to these cats. 
Check in to see if your wrists are killing you. Add a little micro bend, wiggle the fingers, and draw a little more power into your belly. And let's add some movement here, stretching the right leg back, toes are curled under, and pressing into a nice long calf stretch. Keeping the foot on the floor first, just start to stretch the heel back, pulse a little, feel some movement. We're also stretching the toes, getting ready for flip-flop season. Lifting up the leg, squeezing the glute, and flexing the foot to point towards the floor. So while it's here, drop your right hip bone down a little closer to the floor and up. Rock in and up. And we'll stretch the leg back long. We have our right leg extended, toes to the floor, squaring off as best we can, taking the left hand off the earth and shooting it forward, thumbs up. Making a long line from your left fingers to your right heel. And it takes a lot of strength. I actually feel a lot more shaking with my eyes closed than I do regularly. So let's slowly bring the hand down. Bring the knee down. Keep the hands just where they are. Hips to heels, child's pose. Drop to the forearms, pick up the wrists, circle it up. And clap your hands. Hey, I'm still doing it, I'm still here. Let's bring the hands down, reestablish all fours. Rock and roll your pelvis a little bit. Stretch the left leg back long. Allow your feet to find the place. So here's your toes. You can feel the piggy all the way to the big toe. Stretch a little forward and back. Feel some energy move in your calves and in your heel. You can feel free to squeeze your glutes. Lifting the leg up and opening the hip to the side and back. Just feel a little movement. Pressing the heel back, the toes are pointed towards your mat. We're lifting up the right hand, thumbs up, and stretch it long. Thumbs up because we are breathing, feeling, and creating new challenges. This is an adventurous practice, blindfold yoga, you fearless warrior. Let's reach it long and strong, inhale. Exhale, reach a little more. Feel some shaking, you are shaking into growth. Blend all your ingredients together, that's unity. And let's bring the hand back down. Stretch it back, child's pose. Give a little loving to the wrists. Another round of applause. Coming back to all fours. We'll return back to our all fours practice. But I'm ready to get up, how about you? Let's do it gently. Beginning to curl the toes under. Lift the kneecaps up. And just clap your knees now, they can applause too. Tucking your tailbone under, pushing the floor away. Oh, that's some good core. And let's stretch the heels up. Not a full downward dog. Keep our hands grounded and with a deep bend in the knee, walk your feet a little closer to your hands and drop the heels, sliding your hands down. So we're in a little bit of a squat. And hey, look at you can touch your toes. Clap them. See, you can touch your toes. Who cares if your legs are straight? You're still touching your toes. And shake out the head again. Take a nice cleansing breath in. Exhale, let me hear you. Ah, oh yeah. Let's slide the hands up to the shins. Start to wiggle out the shoulders, shake the head, chin to chest. We're coming out of a forward fold. We're getting ready to stand. Let's slide the hands above the knees. Roll up a little more. Feel something new. Roll all the way up to standing. And when you're standing, just start to roll the shoulders forward, up, back and down. Roll it around. Roll it around the other way. Forward, up, back and down. Hands up to the sky, inhale. Stretching the body long, just like we began when we were lying down. We're in a different plane of motion now. So in this plane of motion, the weight bearing is different. So same postures, different way to do them. 
Let's draw the hands back down to Dasana. You have arrived. We're in mountain pose, which is basically standing Shavasana. Softening the knees. Let's separate the feet about a hips width apart. But if you're feeling a little nervous, just take your feet a little bit wider, just like we do in the sand. When in doubt, spread them out. So let's feel that space where you feel comfortable in your hips. Your feet might not be totally forward. One might be out more than the other. None of that matters, especially right now. We're just feeling it, beginning to bend the knees, shake the hips. And notice your contact points as we come back to reestablishing a mindful Dirga Pranayama. One hand to the belly, one hand to the heart. Micro bend the knee, draw the chin in like a turtle with going back in its shell. And imagine you have a yoga block on your head. So your head's in good alignment. That'll be the next video. Relaxing your eyelids even further. Let's bring back the waves. Surfing the waves of breath, inhale, belly expands, ribs expand. We pour it all the way up to the heart. And we squeeze empty. As long as you are breathing, your yoga is amazing. If you decided to just lay down today and listen to the class and take a mindful moment and be where you are, well, namaste to you. But if you're ready to play, have a sense of humor, let go of expectation, here we go standing, taking the waves of breath with us, arms to the side, our contact points are our feet. Let's shift a little forward and back, leaving the heels on the earth. The weight goes to the heels. We lean the body forward. The weight goes to the ball of the feet. Releasing the grippy toes like you're playing the piano with your feet. Try to feel the padding of your toes touch the earth like a soft, gentle touch versus clenching. And as we roll the shoulders back, palms towards me, let's sweep the arms up to the sky, lift the chin, and take a moment to send a wave of love out to the whole world. Everybody needs it. My usual classes, I say, send a wave of good energy out to someone who needs it, but all of us need it right now. So let's all send it to each other. Imagine it landing. Take some for yourself. And as we draw back to mountain pose, fluidly start to change the movement and shape of our spine. Beginning here, in Tadasana, we have a neutral spine. It's where we pretty much live. It's where I hope your spine is in plank and some other poses. From here, feel the top of your heart. Let's just tap it right above the heart. Oh, oh, oh. Feel some good vibrations right in the sternum. Drop the hands back. The intention is to move from the spine more than the arms. The arms can come out to the side. We soften the knees. We imagine your heart's on a string now being pulled up to the earth, creating a baby back bend in the top body allowing that back bend to grow as the back of your hands draw towards the wall behind you. Coming into a back bend, only allowing the hips to press as forward as you feel comfortable without painful compression in the low back. So if you feel like you just flatten the tires above the tag of your pants, ease out on the hips. This is a beautiful place. A lot of people say, when do I inhale? When do I exhale? Well, as long as you're breathing, that's all that matters. But if you want to open it up to the way the body makes more space, when we're open like this, the lungs can inflate even more. Fill your balloon. On the exhale, just like cow pose, we start at the bottom, we hug it in. We're going to round the spine, just like we did in cat-cow, drawing the chin to the chest. And if you like, your fingers can touch to the front. So we are in a good slouchy position here. Opening up the back body. Receiving a brand new wave of breath. Let's meet together in the middle. Inhale the right arm up to the sky without bending your elbow. So we're just standing here straight with our right arm, arm touching the sky willfully. So really putting some effort into stretching the tissue from your hip bone all the way up through your armpit, through your fingers. Feel the side body open. Once it's open, imagine the back of your hand, your booty, the back of your head are all on a wall. And against this imaginary wall, we're sliding, drawing the right hand towards the left. 
the left ear towards the left shoulder, the left hand down towards the earth, lateral flexion. This is like opening the side blinds of your body as the ribs stretch on the left side, or the right side, because I'm mirroring you. They compress on the left. To return, we keep reaching the hand willfully up. You'd be surprised at what willfulness can do to make you feel engaged. Allowing a very slow exhale to slide the hand down the side like you're laying making sand angels. Yeah, that's right, I don't say snow, that's a four letter word. Oh, <laughs> so is sand. Never mind. Let's sweep up the left hand to the sky. Reach high. Did you lock your knees so you can soften them? Release the grippy toes. I cue it because I do it. Let's reach up. More willful, more willful. Feeling the left side of the body now from your ankle all the way to your pinky, really stretched apart. Bring the imaginary wall back, drawing the chin in. Slide down the wall as you point over towards the right side. The right hand is reaching towards your ankle and we're resisting the urge to bend the elbow. That is not wrong, but for the intention of this length. Let's try it this way first. Inhale the arm right back up to the sky like there's a million dollar bill in the clouds you can reach for. Soften the knees again. Make a big wide open space as this sand angel draws its wings from the sky. Hands return back to Dasana. We've opened up both sides of the body. We've gone forward and back. Now we get to do rotation. The arms go out to the side. So this is something that I cue and it's very interesting because most of us lead by looking. Um, hey, I'm nosy, I always look first too. Let's resist the urge to turn the head at all. So imagine now your standing body is against a wall, the back of your hands, the back of your shoulders, your hips, and your head. Follow along with the cues and try to only move the part of your body I'm cueing. Let's soften the knees. Start to move the hips and belly button only so that the belly button points towards the right side. Your shoulders are the same, your gaze is forward. If you're on a wall, your head and your arms would still be there. Let's inhale, get taller. Begin to draw the rib cage and the midsection towards the right. Your arms can follow the heave and drop. Let the gaze stay forward. Elongate again. So elongate as you rotate, lets your spine spiral over each other with lots of space between. The last thing to happen is that we look over the right shoulder. We're still grounded through the knees, not rolling off our feet, nice and tall. Let's return by turning the head back to the front, the shoulders, the middle of the body, and the hips. So let's do that to the other side mindfully, like a corkscrew. We'll just spiral up, hands out to the side, not too high, soft knees. Elongate, stretch as much as you can, like heaven's pulling your head up to the sky as your feet have strong roots. Just turn the hips towards the left, get taller. Turn the chest, the arms follow, towards the left. You're still looking at me through your blindfolds. Inhale, get as tall as you possibly can. Glide the neck, feel what's happening over your left shoulder. Elongate, get really tall. Slowly bring it back. You're gonna be such a better driver looking over your shoulder now. Let's make it a vinyasa, which means to place with mindful awareness. Flowing with the breath, we're standing in Tadasana, mountain pose, just, just like you'd be lying on the ground, palm up. Inhale, lift the heart, reach back. Exhale, tuck the tail, round forward. Forward flexion. The, the breath in, we reach for the sky. The breath out, we hinge to the left side. Let the breath bring you back to neutral. The breath in, the left arm reaches to the sky, we hinge over towards the right. Bring it back to neutral. Bottom, middle, top. Rotate, twist over, look over one side, look over the next. So notice how that felt. 
I teach a lot of corporate yoga, and when I go into workplaces, everybody can benefit from that. Your spine is kind of stuck in a space of forward flexion when you're seated at a desk, especially those of you who are working from home and you're not getting up to go chat with your coworkers. Perhaps set a little alarm on your phone and get up and move your spine. You can even do it seated. So let's play with our contact points. Walk the feet a little wider to the wide edges of your mat and do the same exact flow. This time, no arms. Arms are just going to hang out and do nothing. It's all the spine, so visualize that nice wavy S-shaped spine. Inhale, lift the heart, lean back, then just the spine. Chin up, untangle the jaw while you're there. Let's take the bottom of the spine, tailbone forward, round and slouch, forward flexion. Dropping the chin to the chest, don't forget the seven C's, the backbones of your neck. Rise up to the center, lateral flexion, slide the right ear towards the right shoulder. Your right hand can slide down the thigh. Inhale back to center. Allow the left ear to go to the left shoulder. Ooh, a little more mindfulness about the arms not being involved when we move our spine this way. Soft knees, let's take a little torso twist, hips, Center, shoulders, gaze. Revolve back. Bottom, middle, top, gaze. All the way back. That's how I usually begin every beginning class that we have that we need in the grounding part for blindfold. So anytime you want to tap into the seven waves of the spine, I highly encourage your surfing. We'll add another little untangle that you can do whether you have yoga pants on or not, or not, or any pants. Let's clasp our hands together, interlacing the fingers. Soften the knees, drop the chin, and take a slow breath in, a deep breath out through the nose, and just notice what your go-to is. This is your automatic. This is probably where you always place your hands. And there is nothing wrong with that. But in order to wake up parts of our brain, yoga for the brain, and create more coordination, when we mess with it and feel a little awkward, awkward asana can be very good for giving you more options and more places to feel comfortable. Together, let's soften the knees slightly. Feel where your hands are. Exhale, any ability to do this right off the bat. It's a little tricky. Start to spread the fingers wide and simply slice your fingers to the next notch, which means whatever thumb you have on top is going to be underneath the other thumb. Switch the thumb, switch the first finger, switch the second, switch the third, and switch the fourth. And now clasp your hands and notice what that feels like. It's not the same. It's a little bit different. It's as if somebody said sign your name with your opposite hand. This is good stuff. So we'll take what is not our autopilot, keep those fingers interlaced, soften the knees, and as we flip the palms to the sky with our awkward fingers, draw the hands up to the sky, up overhead. You still have the positioning as if a yoga block is on your head. So the neck is in neutral. We're going to make three circles together. Ready? Inhale. Take the hands to the sky over to the right, behind you, to the left, and in front. So we're twisting from the hips above, trying to keep from the hips below stable. So a balance of stability, lower body, mobility, upper body. Pause after the third. Center yourself. Take your awkward interlaced hands back. Begin to reach in the opposite direction. Three circles here. An inhale half the circle and exhale the other half. This is an energizing movement that starts to decompress your ribs and allow you to breathe more from the side. Plus, when your eyes are open, it looks really fun to party that way. So because we have blindfolds on, just do your own crazy little woohoo wild circles in either direction. You can bring the hips into it now. Shake it, feel fluid and find the liberation of just being able to move your body however the heck you want, not give a crap about who's looking at you, seriously. 
Let's release the hands down, shake it out, and just laugh. <laughs> All right, we're going to change it up. Let's travel down and see where our feet are living right now. Walking the feet wider, the way you're oriented, you will be off the edges of the mat. I've had to change mine for viewing purposes. So we'll feel our feet, walking the feet wide in the widest stance you can, then perhaps one step further, guiding the toes forward so that the outer blades of your feet are parallel to the edges of your mat. So your feet would be oriented in a way like you have the number 11, from piggy toe to ankle. Once you're stabilized here, soften the knees and press into the feet to create a strong base from the feet. Awesome. Interlace the hands again. Isn't that so crazy? You just went into your autopilot. Let's slide the fingers over. The fingers are in another position. And if you're out there saying, why is this so hard? How come I can't get my fingers there? It will come in time. This is the first time you might have done this. We're going back to interlacing the hands up to the sky. Feeling nice and spacious. Let's bend into the right knee, but keep the heel flat. Take the hands and push them to the wall all the way to the right. Once you're there, we're doing a version of a side lunge. The left leg is extended. Find your left piggy toe and press willfully into the outer blade of your left foot, engaging your left glute. Feel it? Awesome. Let's take this circle, bend into the knee, inhale, and slowly drop the hands to the center in a wide-legged forward fold. Feel both feet equal as you begin to bend into the left knee. Anchor into the piggy toe side of your right foot. Start to bring the hands up over towards your left wall. Reach far. We're making a big giant sun light in front of our body. Once you feel it here, let's rise all the way back up to where we began. Inhale. The next two, we will surf with the breath a little bit quicker. So all you're doing is making a big circle with your hands reaching away from you all the way around your body. So let's inhale at the top, exhale, then same direction, blow it out. To the side, down, up, catch. Inhale, blow it out. And pause. Oh, I hope you're feeling some life come to your arms and shoulders. Let's reverse it, going slow the first time. Release the grippy toes, make any little shifts you need to. Bend into the left leg. Feel the outer anchor point of the right piggy toe heel side. Press the hands, try to touch the wall over towards your left. We're bending the left knee. Like a compass, let's bring it down to the bottom of the circle. Hands touch the earth with a deep knee bend. Let's bend into the right knee, anchor down through the left. Push the right wall away. Inhale up to the sky. Pause here. The next one's a big fluid wave. Ready? Inhale. Circle it out. Catch. Bring the hands down. Relax the shoulders, and with thumbs up out to the side like a five-pointed star. Check in with the sensations of your body. I feel more spacious. In order to reach the back of our hands behind each other, let's feel our way through. There's a couple little tricks you can do in order to let your hands meet in an easier way. So our palms are facing forward. Let's squeeze the shoulder blades together. It starts to stretch the front of the body. Bring the hands back, palms towards the back wall as best you can so the front body is open. Once you can't take your hands back any further, try to keep the opening you've created in the front body, the pinch of the shoulder blades, soften the knees and only turn at the elbows, thumbs down. The shoulders are still open, they don't have to join you. Allowing your hands to come together, squeezing your shoulders together, then drawing them down as you work towards allowing the palms to touch each other. So while we're here, let's draw the hands down towards the hips, 
lift the chin up to the sky, and just open and close the jaw. If you might have had any tension, grimacing, or frowning this week, this is a great time to erase those lines of worry as you just kind of chew, stretch out the jaw. I was a dental hygienist long before a yoga teacher. So it's really important that you don't clench your teeth. I'm going to take it a little sideways. I'm so glad you guys were blindfolded. I have no idea what I look like right now, but who cares anyway, right? While we're up here, let's stick out the tongue. A mini version of lion's breath. Inhale through the nose, exhale. Stick out your tongue, fog it out through the mouth. Yeah, March has been a lion. I can't wait for it to turn into a lamb. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. With our hands behind your back, let's bend the knees. Hip hinge forward. Drop the head towards the earth. Reach the hands towards the sky. And make a couple straight arm circles. Not a big range of motion. Reverse the circles. Good. Drop the hands down to the earth. It's there, I promise. And begin to lunge side to side, bend into one knee and bend into the other, sliding like a speed skater. We do this a lot in our full moon yoga flow. Well, it's a great little practice. After you've done it with both feet flat, let's just pick up the right heel, put it down. Pick up the left, put it down. The head's still hanging. You don't have to look at anything. Just tuck the chin to the chest. Let gravity be your friend. This is also great because all that sit tension at the bottom of your tailbone is pouring down your spine. And as it flushes through your brain, let it take any negative thoughts, shake them out. After you've lifted both heels, let's lift the right heel, if this works for your body, and bend in, side lunge, the heel lifts. Once you're there, see if you roll off the pinky toe side of your left foot and try to anchor it back down. You'll feel a long line of stability now from your ankle up to your knee and your foot for your anchor foot. Let's inhale back to center flat feet. Bend into the left knee. Lift the heel if that works for you. If you naturally rolled in pronating, Draw your piggy toe back to the outer blade of your foot. Feel the stability, anchor in. This is great for teaching your body how to not roll your ankle when you're running. It also helps with pronation. Just get, get to know this part of your body. Let's head back to the center. Awesome, while we're down here, just squat, so hips up, hips down, the knees bend. Squat up, squat down. We're still in a wide-legged stance. Now with the hands on your mat, simply heel toe your feet back in so they draw underneath your body. Walk the hands to your shins and roll it very gently. Roll it out. So now we get to take a little stroll and let your feet have the eyes to tell you where you are. So let's take a walk and feel the texture of your mat and try to find the front of your mat. You'll know when you're there. Once you're there, feel the sides. So we're all at the short edges of our mat. Good. Let's turn around so that the heels are at the front of your mat and just take a little stroll, noticing where the back of your mat is. Whoop, there it is. Feel it. Take a little turn. Walk a little wider now. So to, in order to return back to the top of our mats, let's let the feet go so wide. We're giving a lot of love to the piggy toe today. Or pinky toe, depending on what you like to call it. Let's find a place to keep the pinky piggy toe inside the border of the mat, but right on the edge. Let's walk the line and take a wider stance back to the top of the mat. Ooh, I can hear my footprint. Relax. 
relax the shoulders, draw the neck to neutral, take a wider stance, trace the outside borders of your mat, the long edges, with each of your feet. Again, when in doubt, spread them out, bigger base of support. Let's go up one more time. Find the top of the mat. Try to align the feet underneath your hip bones. So if you were to look from the side, or feel from the inside actually is what we're doing. The earlobe, the shoulder, the hip bone, the knee and the ankle are kind of in the same line. So from here, let's just let the arms hang wherever they want to hang and slowly walk backwards with a deep bend in the knee. A little bit of fear can sometimes rise up. You know, it's not like I'm going to bump into somebody, but you still think, ooh, where am I? That's good because we're taking an adventure and learning that this is a safe place to be. Let's turn around, walk it backwards. When we land at the top of your mat, we're going to make a turn now so that you are facing with the front of your body towards the long edge of your mat. So when you turn around, reach your feet forward, you should feel a foot trace the short edge of your mat on the end part. We've got a long mat to the side and we'll move inner thigh, outer thigh. Take your foot out, bring it in. So we're heading towards the back of our mat side by side. The arms aren't doing anything. Once you get there, just start to take it the other way. Inner thigh, outer thigh. You know, it's a shame that we don't take long walks on the beach sideways like that because these poor underdogs are dying to be worked and the poor quads and hamstrings have to do everything. So let's wake up inner thigh, outer thigh, inner thigh, outer thigh. Next time we get back to the top, let's step out as wide as you can with the leg that's taking you down towards the mat. Pause. As if you're sneaking, bring the other foot up to meet it by weight bearing into your leg and let the other one come up and catch. Take it to the side, come up and catch. Oop, no room left. Let's do it the other way. Taking it in the other direction. Take your leg as long as you can. Feel your foundation. That's your stability. The other one's going mobile. Inhale, bring the foot in. Bring it back. Awesome. Let's face the short edge of the mat at the top. So it would be facing the front of the room. Find your way there. Come on back to Tadasana. And we'll do a very slow flow sun salutation. So let's begin by just taking our hands to the belly. The solar plexus, the color yellow, the color of sunshine. And visualize the brightest sunny day you have ever experienced on the beach. The beaming sun rays. How powerful and amazing that feels. The warmth on your skin. And from the center of the sun, which is where your hands are right now, your solar plexus, this will help guide us, shooting its sun rays down through our feet, through our fingers and through the head. So let's visualize the core center of the body as the center of the sun. It's where the light begins. And take that with our hands back to the side, sweeping our hands up to the sky, reaching tall. Good, as we feel the hands here, let's reach out to either side, bend the knees, Swan dive, fold the body forward. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Shake out the head and allow the hands to travel up mid shin as you roll your shoulders back, pull the tailbone back and pull the heart forward coming into a half lift. Keeping long space in the spine, let's bend the knees, find some new contact points as your hands come down to the earth. I'm grounded now with two feet, two hands. But during the transition, when my right foot moves back, there'll be three contact points, so it is natural to wiggle. If you had a table with just three legs, it would wiggle. So let's use our breath to step the right foot back. 
drop the right knee to the mat, either curl the toes under or leave them flat. We can feel where our leg is, so let's just walk our hands on top of the left thigh first. Coming into a lunge, a kneeling lunge. Then reach the arms up to the sky, dialing the thumbs out so the palms face out and open up wide to a crescent lunge, lift the chin. You may notice how much your legs have to work to hold you up here. This would be a simple balance if your eyes were open because your drishti, your gaze, is almost like having another contact point on the floor. So let's feel the left foot and just press the foot down without gripping the toes. Equal weight between the ball of the foot and the left heel. Be gentle with the right knee, the right toes. Let's take a breath in. Take our hands first back to the thigh. Slide down the lower leg. Frame the foot. Bring both knees together. Walk the knees back a little bit. And as you feel your hands, spread the fingers real wide pressing the mat away, almost like you're trying to push into the mat and make it longer, stretching towards the pinky side. Let's come into kneeling plank by rolling the elbows in the heart forward, tuck the tailbone under, and tuck the chin. So imagine you have your favorite beverage on your spine right now and you don't want it to spill. Can you find the neutral strong spine? Your choice, flat feet, all 10 toes on the mat, or toes curled under. Beginning by pulling the heart forward, we're still keeping space between the shoulders and the ears. Bending the elbows to come into a kneeling chaturanga. Pause for a moment where you feel your triceps say, hey, I'm joining blindfold yoga. <laughs> try, try, try. Slowly bringing it down. Chin, chest, hips, everything flattens. Let's roll the shoulders back. Take a moment to feel that your thumbs are almost at like your nipple line, rolling the shoulders away from the ears. And slowly peeling a little bit of the upper body off the mat in a baby cobra. And you can kind of shake your snake. Now, hey, snakes don't have arms, so if we're using upper back strength, we should be able to lift our hands up during cobra. Neutralizing the neck so that your chin is down, holding the orange between your neck and your chin. Let's place the hands on the side of the chest, curl our toes under, press our hands up so we're back in an all fours slash kneeling plank position. And you can feel free to stay here or anchor down through the hands, curl your toes under, and as you draw your hips to the sky, the knees leave the earth, less contact points, and we stretch into downward dog. So let your dog have some fun. It's going for a walk. So bending one knee and the other. Our body looks like an upside down V. We're not dumping all the weight in the wrists because we know we have our core to help absorb some of the energy. Staying with a deep breath. And while we're here in downward dog, there is no goal. It's not like, oh, heels flat, I win. It's a process to create movement and stretch. We'll relax the shoulders. Let the ears come between the biceps. And just shake out the head. One thing I like to do with my class to make sure you're not holding on to tension in your body in downward dog is to have you do three raspberries. So let's bring the lips together. Inhale through the nose and just... Oh, it's hard. My neck is in my mouth. Okay, here we go again. Take two, raspberry. Inhale. Again. One more time. You can make any sound you want. Okay, while we're here, and we're walking our dog and moving, do you know the first time that I tried to do that when I got new speakers at the beach, and I went in the speaker. You can imagine what that sounded like. It was not a raspberry. Anyway, let's return to the next part of our sun salutation. Drop both knees. Allow the right foot to come forward in a lunge position. You can help it along. And just try to feel if the knee's over the ankle. The back 
now has the left knee on the mat, flat toes, your toes curled under. We're taking a stroll to let the hands be on the muscle of the thigh of the right leg as we roll the shoulders back and feel. If you feel like you're on a tightrope, simply walk your right foot closer to the wide edge of your mat. So let's feel here. Where's your base of support? You've got a foot, a knee, and another foot. But you've got your breath in the middle. Come home to your sunshine. And from the radiant sunshine, let's shoot those rays up to the sky. Hands to the sky. Reach up. Look up. Chin up. And just reaching up. Optimism. Looking up. Reaching up. Touching the sky. Good. Let's bring the hands back down to the thigh. Hip hinge forward, slide the hands to frame the foot. A little bit trickier part now. We're curling the back toes under, lifting your left kneecap. Either drawing the foot right up to meet the foot or take a little hop along. Foot to foot, we're in a forward fold. Bowing to our bodies that are still here. So you have two options. You can use support, walk your hands up the front of your legs or reach your hands behind you and pull yourself up, reversing the swan dive. Hands pressed together in Anjali Mudra prayer pose, soft knees. Bow the chin and take a moment of gratitude for any new wiggly sensations of aliveness that you've experienced in that sun flow. And let's, it's funny, I'm about to see, let's see, we have blindfolds. Let's feel the next round leading with the opposite leg. Moving a little quicker, or just saying, nah, I'll catch up with you next time. Child's pose. So if you're with me, we're standing in Tadasana. Taking the arms up to the sky. Inhale, reach up tall. Things are getting better. We're tall, we're long, we're strong. Swan diving, bowing to our bodies as you come into your forward fold. Shake out the head. Find your shins. There they are. Roll the shoulders back. Half lift. Long, stretchy spine. Let's bend the knees. Step back. The left foot, toes find the back of your mat. The left knee finds the back of your mat. We establish our base. This time, without holding on to our thigh, if you would like, sweep the arms up to the sky. Lift the chin, look up, open the arms wide, crescent lunge. I am strong, I am strong, I am strong. Smile, and as you lift your chin, you are in the opposite of text neck. So just like give an extra big smile. Inhale, let's exhale, find the floor. Are you feeling a little more trusting of your body in space? Let's bring knees to knees. Roll it back. So from here, your choice. Kneeling plank or full plank. Power in the plank. A very slow descent. We feel more when we go slow. See how slowly you can bring your body all the way into your mat. And if you plopped, that's okay too. The earth is there to catch you. Let's slide the hands down. Make some room in the neck. Inhale, cobra or upward dog, which is a bigger back bend. We don't want to lock out the elbows. You tuck your tailbone under. You feel the back bend happening here, and you can shimmy in there. Let's use a nice slow exhale to just melt ourselves back down to the mat. Curling the toes under to press up to downward dog or hanging child's pose. If you're in downward dog, make sure you have your raspberry lips with you. Shake out the head. If you're feeling a little crazy, go ahead and lift up your right leg. Straighten it, kick it, play with it. There are no rules. Three-legged dog, less points of contact, a little more mindfulness required. Put the right leg down. Send the left leg to the sky. Shake and play. Notice where your head went or where you might have stored some other tension. Let that stuff go. And let's come back into downward dog. Soften the knees and allow the left foot to find its way up. 
to the top of the mat. Walking it forward, establish your base, and let's stretch to the sky, inhale up, lean it back. Feeling like a warrior here, wide open, strong, sensing that there is always some movement going on. So the poses in yoga are never about staying still like a statue. Because if you're breathing, there's always something moving in your body. Embrace the wiggles. Let's exhale, touch the ground, feel where we are. Curl the back toes under, lift the kneecap, bring the foot home. Stepping to the top to pause a moment in forward fold. To rise up however you need to, all the way up, hands to the heart center. Ah, not so scary to stand with our eyes closed. But while we're here, this part, did you know that as a yoga teacher, you learn how to read speech bubbles? If any of you remember the old Batman uh, cartoons that used to be on, they were like, Kazam, shoot. Well, there was a lot more going on than Kazam and shoot the first time that I taught blind bolted tree. So resist the urge to get into a judging, why can't I balance? It doesn't matter. How often do you walk around doing blindfolded tree? So just listen to the cues, follow along, and allow yourself to be a curious explorer of this new territory. Because if you practice exploring new territory in your physical body, this new territory in the world that we're all currently trying to figure out a way to navigate will seem a little more accessible because your confidence is up, your fear is less. So let's use this asana blindfolded to establish more trust and less fear. It helps us just be curious about the possibilities instead of scared of it not being familiar. So here we go, tree pose. Let's find the left foot and bear weight there. Pick up the right heel, then turn the right knee to the side so that you feel your heel touch the inside of your left foot. Your whole body might have shifted now over a little bit more um, towards the left. Arms can be out to the side for more stability. Lifting the heart, shoulders are relaxed. Find a place where there's no tension in the face. Then squeeze like crazy, a little glute salute on the right side without hard locking your knee. So your knee's straight, but it's not hard locked. Feel the wiggles happening here. Then just for fun, and I'm doing it in public in front of you, so you can do it at home without anybody there. Pick up your foot. Woo! And see if you can allow the sole of your foot to go on your calf. And be wherever you are. If you breathe through it, there's so much more stability. Arms out to the side. I feel like that dude that walks across the Grand Canyon with a big stick on a string between the two mountains. You might be aware of all the muscles it takes to find balance that you aren't usually conscious of in tree pose. Look at all that power you've got. You can put it down for a break, circle the ankle. You want to stay on this foot for one more option. Start to ground down through the left side. Take your right hand towards your right thigh. Bend your right knee, take the foot up the floor. See if you can find your foot. Woo, this is tricky. On the inner thigh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> In case your eyes are closed and you're not peeking, I just fell. But that's fun and playful. Kids at a playground, they don't care how much they fall, they get up and they laugh. Let's do that. This is your yogi playground. If you want to catch your hands back in namaste, whatever it takes, steer your ship, find your tree, and know you're getting a lot of good core work here just by regrouping. You can play with hand options, and pause for a moment, come back to earth, hands to the belly. This vessel of support, your deepest breath is waiting for you. Refuel, 
Sometimes it's nice in our practice to pull over for gas and refuel before we go to the next side. No hurries. It's not ever about getting it over with. On to the next pose. Check, check, check. Let's be where you are. Good. Let's see what this side has to offer. Weight bear into the right side. Feel the right foot. Squeeze the right glute. The knees engage, your quads are strong, but it's not hyperextended. Good, hands to the heart first. Pick up your left heel, feel the ball of your foot. That's an important push up point when we walk, run, then dial the knee out to the wall to the left side, allowing your heel to touch above your ankle of the right leg. Hmm, feels a little easier for me. Today could be totally different tomorrow. Once you're there, you want to bring your hands back out. Start to feel the waves. Our mantra for NJB yoga is ride rather than resist the waves. That's life, that's movement, that's certainly balance. Then begin to play and be okay with wherever you are as you lift your foot to the bottom calf. Feeling the good vibrations. All this vibrating is getting something unstuck that you don't need anyway, so enjoy. After you find that, explore where you are here. There's a lot of resilience happening to your balancing leg. Ooh, maybe it's not easier. Maybe it is. Doesn't matter. We're playing. Let's put the foot down. Enjoy the heat you've created. If you'd like to do the natural grab your foot, slam it on the thigh asana, let's do it. Left hand to the left thigh, bend the knee, catch your foot, find your inner thigh, engage, whew, play. Let your arms go wherever they need to be. This is exactly what it feels like when you're learning to surf on water. <laughs> Whatever tree pose. Are you wondering what's in my speech bubble? It's like, oh my gosh, my students work so much harder than I do. <laughs> and then return back to your first space tree. Drop the feet, hands to the heart. And notice any changes that you made in your body, your legs, your calves, your heels. And we'll open up the feet wide. We'll take the arms out to the side, five-pointed star. So here we are all standing in such an opening position. We are open to the possibilities that things will get better. Our hearts are open. They're ready to receive the love from one another, even if we can't feel it with a hug right now. So energetically, as your eyes are closed, Take a deep breath in and feel a warm embrace. Hug. Take it in. A lot of the shapes and body language that we use are deeply connected to emotions. So this stance of wide open, arms to the side, head to the sky, feet to the earth, wide open. When you see someone that you love, and you're excited, or you walk into a happy party, it's like, hey, I'm here, woohoo! This is the posture of receive openness. It is not the crossed arms, hands on hips, chin down, blocked heart. There's no shielding of the heart right now. The heart in front of you, to the side of you, the back of your heart, it's all wide open, and it's receiving love. So let's all say to each other, I love you. I love you. I love you. Take it in. The universe loves us. It's just a little crazy now. There is some higher power that is leading us all to a space of deeper connection. And right now it all begins with us connecting to ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. 
So let this one be the loudest, most powerful one and mean it. As you open up your arms, look to the sky, feel rooted, and yell out three I am amazings. I am amazing. I am amazing. I am amazing.